Hello and welcome to another episode of Cadence Fishing TV. I'm Steve Whitfield. I'm at the uh, wonderful Southfield Reservoir on the outskirts of Doncaster, where today I'm going through giving you an overview of the feeder rods what I've been using for the past 12 months from Cadence. Uh, today we're going to start with the CR10 13 foot distance feeder. This is actually a prototype rod. Uh, it's not actually available yet, but it, it will be available soon. It's got a, a great action for a distance rod. Uh, a lot of the distance rods, what you see people fishing with these days are quite pokey, but this retains some of the fish playing action, which I think it's, it's, it's a great rod. The feeder I've got here today is a 60 gram feeder and I've, I've got this clipped up at 75 meters. Uh, the tip I've got in the rod is an ounce and a half progressive. Now, this tip is fantastic for, for bream fishing and, and such like at distance because it gives you that registration of bites. The rod also comes with another three tips. We've got a two ounce and a three ounce carbon also. But the difference between the tips and, and, and the braid tip, what I call this, is it's that they've got, got bigger runners. So if you're fishing with shock leaders, etc., uh, there's no problem. Yeah, so in match conditions at Southfield, the general consensus is to start on a longer line. Now today I've got this clipped up at 75 metres, which is probably a bit long for this time of year, but there will still be fish sitting there, but in winter it's certainly a line that you'd exploit. So let's give it a go and see how it chucks. Well, we're going to start today with a worm up bait. I've got this on a size 12 hook an 014 mainline. This is quite robust, but because of the big feeder and the distance is what we're going to be, we're going to be casting, I think this is the, the appropriate tackle to use. Now this is a 60 gram feeder. So when it's loaded, it's going to be in the region of 70, 80 grams. On the terminal end, I'm fishing a size 12 hook with a dendrobina hook bait. The hook length is 014 and the feeder is 60 grams. It's quite a big feeder, but for rods of this stature, you do actually need quite a big feeder to actually load the rod up and get the best out of it. Let's give it a chuck and see how we go. The reel I'm using is the CR10 5500. Now this in itself is like a mini pit reel, but because of the big spool and the line lay on this reel, it really makes casting effortless. The reel itself is loaded up with O10 braid and I've got an O10 braid shock leader. So I'm actually fishing direct with braid. Now that's testament to the rod that I can actually do this. So let's give it a cast and see how we go. Now when we're fishing these kind of distances, braid can be a massive advantage. Not only does it make casting a lot easier for the distance, it also enhances the bite registration. So when we're fishing in winter, for example, when the bites can be quite shy, the bite detection is so much better. Fishing these long distances like we do in winter on, on places such as Southfield, the way to approach the match is to feed maybe just one or two feeders at the start with very few loose offerings in, and then fish a smaller feeder and actually sit on that and maybe fish half an hour between each cast. That may sound a bit boring, but at the end of the day, you're only looking for three or four bites through the day, and that could actually win the match. The rig I'm using today is a Paternoster. You'll see on this rig, it's quite long. In general, this is the rig what I'd use for most of my bream fishing and feeder fishing in general, to be honest with you. But one thing I will advise is when you're fishing at distance, increase the length of your Paternoster. You'll see, you'll, you'll see later in the video when I'm using the shorter rods, how I, I reduce the paternoster down to two inch for the short chucks. But basically what we've got there is doubled up braid, two rubber stops and a quick chain swivel locked in between. Quite a simple rig, really tangle free, simple to use. We're going to have another cast on this, this rod before I move on to the next one. And one thing you've got to do when you're fishing at distance is cast positively. And I'll show you the way I do this. I start off by swinging the feeder out in front of me. 
and I'm already starting to load the rod up. And what I'll do, I'll swing my rod round to the right and when I get it over my right shoulder, I'll actually increase the speed as I cast the rod rather than snatch at it. I see quite a lot of anglers putting a rod over the, over the red and snatching at it and it's really not right, it doesn't look right at all. So this is, a, this is what I'll do. So I'll swing the rod round behind me in a pendulum effect and then start to speed the rod up as I chuck, the, chuck it out. And you see there, that's it, the clip at 75 metres without too much trouble. Now the second rod I'm going to talk about today in the range is the CR10 13 foot number 3. Now this rod I actually get torn between this and the number 2 because they're very similar. What I'd suggest about this rod is it's got all the action of the, the number 2 but it's probably got 25-30% more power. So for places like Southfield for example where, the, where it can tow quite, quite badly and it also can get quite windy because it's so open, sometimes I need to swap over to this rod, but having this rod set up and paired up with that rod makes things really simple. This rod in itself, I've used it on the Trent, I've used it on reservoirs, and it's equally at home fishing big rivers like the Trent, or for bream, skimmers for example. But I think I'd be right in saying this is probably the best selling rod out of the Cadence range. It's really popular. The reel I've got this coupled up with is the CR10 5000. Now this is, this is a prototype reel. What we've actually done with this reel is we've slowed the gear ratio down where it's more suited to feeder fishing. It's more specific for feeder fishing as opposed to the the 3 and 4000 reels. The key advantage of having a lower geared ratio reel for me is having a slow retrieve makes playing fish a lot easier. It also gives you a lot more cranking power. In a given match situation, especially at this time of year at Southfield, which where we're just going into the summer, opposed to fishing at these real long distances like I showed you before with the, with the distance feeder rod, a starting line would generally be about 50 to 60 metres. Like I said, I'm usually torn between the number two and the number three, and I'll probably get away with the number two today. But the number three is great for feeding up anyway, and I would start on this, and maybe feed this one less aggressive than the shorter lines because the tendency would be for the fish to move in onto the shorter lines as the day progresses. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to set the distance for the rod. I've got these two sticks set at two metres apart and basically what I'll do, I'll count the turns on the sticks two metres at a time until I get to the desired distance. This is great because if I did want to change the lines or I wanted to remember where I'd choked, I can do that. Another good advantage having it on the sticks, if you do have a, mis if you do have a mishap and you crack off, you can always go back on the sticks and you know exactly where you've fished. And it's just then a single case of clipping up on your reel and winding back. There you go, perfect. Time now to have another cast. Now I'm often asked about feeder choice. Now personally I'm a big fan of cage feeders, much, much preferring to use a cage feeder than a plastic feeder or a window feeder, although I do use them on occasion. One thing that's important, especially on places like Southfield where the conditions are so changeable, is having a selection of the same feeders but with varying weights. 
Now this can be a massive advantage because if you're catching on a certain size feeder and you're actually feeding it and you've got the feeding right and you're catching, let's just say the wind gets up for example, you can fish a very, very similar size feeder apart from the lead and actually achieve the same casting distance. If you look there, that feeder there is it's barely 20 grams and that would be a choice to use given the conditions. I've also got a similar size feeder there at 40 grams. This one I'd probably use around the 50 meter mark. The next rod in the range is the 13 foot number two what I'm going to look at. Now this is very similar rod to the number three, but like I said before, the number three has 25%, 30% more power. But this is probably my go-to rod for most of my bream fishing. The difference between the number three and the number two is this is a slightly slimmer blank and we actually go down in tip size to a 2.2 mil tip. That offers the very same action, but slightly less power. Again, I've got the real, uh, the, the 5000 CR10 reel loaded with braid. When I'm using the 13 foot number two, I generally use the two ounce tip what's provided. This is because I'm generally fishing at a longer distance than the, than, than the number one 11 foot or the number two 12 foot, for example. This coaxes the tow lot better, but it still offers me great bike registration. Earlier in the video, we talked about cage feeders and why they're my preferred choice. One of the reasons I, I like cage feeders as opposed to plastic feeders, I can really control how the bait descends out of the feeder. And this is done easily by compressing it, either keeping it quite loose or squeezing it really hard. It's quite simple, but it's really effective. Southfield in itself is quite shallow. So a gentle squeeze of the feeder is generally more than enough to carry a bait on the cast to your swim. Although Southfield in itself can tow quite bad, so on occasion there may be a need to squeeze that feed, squeeze your feed into the feeder and make sure it stays there, letting the fish home in and hopefully finding your hook bait. In contrast to Southfield, a lot of other reservoirs are quite deep, therefore using a cage feeder, giving it a firm squeeze ensures that your bait gets to the bottom. The next rod in the range is the CR10 12 foot feeder number two. This again, probably one of my go-to rods. The difference with the setup on this rod is I'm actually fishing this one with mono. I'm still retaining my braid shock leader and the same setup. But what I've got there, look, if you can see there, I've got the braid attached to my mono with a tapered knot. Quite a small, a small knot, but very strong. The tip I've got fitted in this rod is the ounce and a half. If you look there, like I said earlier, generally speaking, for these kind of distances, that tip's the right choice. I've got this one clipped up at 36 meters. 
and it's probably bordering the distance where I'd swap over to maybe the number one 11 foot, for example. In a match situation here at Southfield, I generally start by feeding this line quite heavy. And what I'd do, I'd feed it with maybe six or seven feederfuls, plenty of particles, chop worms, etc., on this line. But I wouldn't start on this line. I'd move out onto me, maybe my 50 metre line or my 60 metre line, if that's the case, and give this line plenty of time to settle. The reason I do that is this is going to be one of my main lines. I'd expect after an hour, an hour and a half, I'd be, I'd be onto this line and maybe hopefully starting to put fish in the net. Let's have a look at the ground bait, what I favour here at Southfield. Right, ground bait choice here at Southfield. Simple for me, fish meal. The mix that I've, had, I've been using today and I've had quite a lot of success on is Sonu Baits Pro, it's Thatcher's Original. This is, a, this is new to the, to the range and I really like it. The other half of the mix is Method Match Original. One thing to mention here at Southfield is they don't allow pellets in your ground bait. So I mix this in equal parts. So I'll take a bait tin of each and I'll put this one through the sieve just to ensure we're complying with the rules. To be fair, that's all gone through. The thatches is really fine and it's really well milled down. So there's no need to do this. That in itself has quite a fishy smell and it's strong in fish meal. And that's my choice here on Southfield. By adding small amounts of water and using the whisk, and give that a really thorough mix. What I tend to do is do this at the start. In a match situation, I certainly one of the first things I do when I got to my peg is mix the ground bait. Once I've got this to what I think is the right consistency, I'll leave that to stand for 10 minutes and carry on setting my kit up. And basically what I'll do, I'll just add a little bit more water and that should be fine. So there's just two more rods we're going to look at today from the Cadence Feeder Rod range and they're all about fishing closer in. So this is the Cadence CR10 11 foot number one. This rod I use for fishing distances for let's say 20 metres to, to 35 metres. Again, this is loaded up with, with mono opposed to braid, but this, this rod is really soft enough. You could use braid on this rod, not a problem. And in winter, I probably would. Contrary to a lot of 11 foot rod, uh, feeder rods on the market, this is actually a, a three piece rod as opposed to two. Now this gives it an absolutely superb action and it bends right through. It's actually flawless. Now the advantage of this, because it's so soft, you can really scale down fishing small hooks and light hook lengths. For example, I'm more than confident of fishing hook length diameters as low as 010. I've even caught carp on that, on this rod. So that's testament to how soft the rod actually is. So typically at Southfield, fishing kind of distances around the 20 metre mark. This would be exploited probably the last, last, last hour and a half of the match. And this really can make or break your day. If you can pick fish off through the day at your longer lines and keep feeding this line periodically until you actually can go on it, you can more than capable of doubling or even trebling your weight in the last hour. This is now becoming rod choice, fishing places let's say like Allcroft on the winter pairs, for example, where you're fishing anything from, from a pole line right across to the other bank, which 
on the moat for example is, is 30, 35 meters maximum. So this has been rod choice for there. I'd also use it maybe on the canal, the Air and Calder for example. There's some great bream fishing and skimmer fishing on that canal. An 11 foot rod with this kind of action is absolutely perfect. Tip choice for this rod is almost always the ounce tip. Because the rod's so soft, that actually marries in with this one absolutely superbly. And generally speaking, that tip stays in this rod. You can see now it's starting to tow quite a lot, but the tip's actually pulling lovely into the rod. I could see any bites on that now. Although the tip is, it has got quite a bend in it because of the tow, it's actually pulling into the rod and I could see any kind of bite on that. And a lot of the times when you're fishing at these distances, the bite is actually what we call a drop back. And generally speaking, the fish are on at this point. The hooks I'm using here at Southfield are a Preston N30. These are pretty new to the range. And I also couple these up with O13 power line. Now, I tend to use these when I'm fishing braid at distance. And that's because I just prefer to fish that slightly bigger hook and, I've, and, a, and a slightly stronger hook length. O13 coupled with that is perfect for fishing with braid on here. Now, when I'm fishing shorter distances and I'm fishing with the mono, I'll pretty much just scale down the same pattern of hook, the same brand of line, but just go down a diameter and an hook size. For me, that's perfect for fishing Southfield. The great thing about hooks of this size, I can change baits quite freely. I can fish single dendrobina, double red worm, three or four dead maggots. For this kind of fishing, they're absolutely perfect. Right, let's have a look in my side tray. As you can see, I've got some chop worms. I keep them in the sieve. With that, I can tip off any excess juice, what I don't need, or I can mix that with the ground bait. If I, now and again, here on Southfield, you could put kind of a wet mix in and emptying out on the top. That sometimes can entice a bite or bring a fish into your peg. I've got live maggots, dead maggots, casters, dendrobinas, and good old fearful red worms. Now these are probably my favorite bream and skimmer bait of all time. And two of these are absolutely perfect. Now feeding a nip of chop worms in there and a few dead maggots and maybe a few casters. This is what I've had the most successful on been most successful on here at Southfield. Now this 20 meter line, especially now we've got that, it started getting choppy and we've got a bit of two, I'm expecting to catch some fish on this line. As you can see, it's only a short choke. Last but not least, this is the Caden CR10 9 foot number two feeder. 
this is the latest uh, addition to the range and, and it's the one I've had the least time but I've already used this quite a lot here on Southfield and a couple other venues where fishing that pole line is absolutely essential now lots of matches are feeder only and that's where this rod comes into its own recent results here on Southfield where lots of people have been catching on the pole to exploit that in a feeder only match you need something like this it's a great little tool I've got this coupled up with the ounce and half tip I find this one better for this rod and this is for fishing 11 to 13 metres where anglers would normally be catching on a pole line this is a bit different as opposed to chucking where we've started this morning at 75 metres with a distance rod I'll only be fishing with this rod at 13 metres but to do this the easiest way to do it is by an underarm cast this is far easier than doing the overhead cast because it's very hard to land it correctly so this is how we do it there you go 13 meters on the CR10 nine foot feeder because it's a shorter rod you may need to adjust your rest your feeder arm I tend to use my bump bar a lot these days I just find it far easier and more stable but by lifting the butt rest and getting that position there I can set the tip perfectly There you have it, six fantastic rods from the Cadence feeder range. Absolutely superb for catching bream like these. Thanks for watching.